Welcome to How to Create Your Podcast Intro and Outro with GarageBand. This is going to be a two-part video. My name's Jen Eads. I am host of the Brassy Broadcast and HBIC, that is Head Broad in Charge, at the Brassy Broadcasting Company. In this first video, I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to record your voice in GarageBand, what settings to use so that you get a good professional sound, and then also how to edit out any mistakes that you might make so you don't have the pressure on yourself to get everything done in one take. And in the second video, I'm going to show you how to add music to the voiceover that you recorded and get a good mix on that so you've got a good professional sounding intro and outro that you have created yourself. So here's what you're going to need for this project. A Mac computer, GarageBand software, an external microphone, and monitoring headphones. And I recommend that you use headphones that don't have the built-in microphone. That way you don't have to worry about GarageBand trying to default to that and recording from your headphones microphone rather than from your external good microphone. And for this project, I'm using GarageBand version 10.1.2 and the Atari 2100, I'm sorry, the ATR 2100 USB microphone plugged directly into my Mac through the USB port. So if you haven't already, go ahead and connect your mic to your computer, plug your headphones into the headphone monitoring jack at the bottom of the microphone, and if the microphone you're using doesn't have the monitoring jack there, just go ahead and plug directly into the headphone jack on your computer. And now we're going to open up GarageBand, and I like to go just start with an empty tr empty project. Choose that. And it's going to default to this classic electric piano. You don't need that. Just highlight it, delete that track, and then the next screen is going to pop up with this microphone and the audio as the default. And you want to check to make sure that it is using your external microphone as the instrument. And I like to keep this box ticked because I like to be able to hear myself through the headphones to help monitor, to make sure I'm staying right on the microphone rather than drifting off to the left or drifting off to the right and not getting a good, clear recording with consistent volume levels. And then we just go to create. Now, the next step for me is going up to record and setting a count in for one bar. I like that because it gives me four beats to get ready to know exactly when to come in and start recording. So the first thing we're going to do then is go to voice over here in the channel strip setting. And I like to go with narration vocal. It feels like just a good place to start to get kind of a basic track. And then we're going to go up here and do a test recording so we can play that back and adjust the sound to just exactly how we want it. Hey, this is Jen Eads from the Brassy Broadcast, and you are listening to the Brassy Broadcast. Okay, so that was easy enough. Now, to make it easy to play this back and not have to keep hitting play every time, you can go up here to click the cycle button or use the shortcut C on your keyboard. And then you can adjust the length of it right up here. Hey, this is Jen Eads from the Brassy Broadcast, and you are listening to the Brassy Broadcast. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go to this icon, which is your smart control. Click on that, and it's going to bring up your channel settings. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this reverb. It is crazy. So we can go up like that and sound like our deeper inner voice. I like to pull all that out or most of it out. And then you can also play around with your EQ. You wanna pull some of the bass out. Do you wanna add bass and make it a little boomy and fatter? You can adjust your highs right here, and then the mids right here. All right. So that's kind of how you season to taste, if you will. So let's play this back and hear how it sounds. Hey, this is Jen Eads from the Brassy Broadcast, and you are listening to the Brassy Broadcast. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that, feeling pretty good. So we're going to get rid of this view and click the smart controls. We're going to get rid of this test vocal, just highlight it and delete, and we are going to turn off our cycle record because we are recording for real. Click this button to make sure you're back at the beginning, and let's check this out and see what happens.
Hey, this is Jen Eads, and you are listening to the Brassy Broadcast, and we are going to talk about one, two, two, three, and four. Okay, so I need to edit out that second two. And the way we're going to do that is to click on the scissor icon, which opens up the editor. And I love this because I'm over 40, so I like having this big screen view down here. We can stretch that to make it bigger. And we can go to the slider over here and make that even bigger if we need to zoom in, which is very helpful when you're trying to make cuts in your audio. So let's play this back and find out where that second two is that we need to cut. Talk about one, two, two. Okay, so there it is. Now, this is where you actually make the cut in this window down here. And see that my cursor is an arrow. As I get down to this line, it turns into the plus sign. And then you hold down your cursor, click it and drag, and hit delete. And boom, it's magically gone. Two. Now, what we want to do is we don't want to leave this little piece over here hanging out all by itself. So we're just going to highlight that, move it over here so it lines up next to the first region, and check it out. Two, three, and four. All right, and there you have it. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So we'll just knock that back down a little bit. Go to the beginning. So now you have a voiceover track that you're pleased with. You can either export that this way. So you go up to share, export song to disk. I'm gonna save this as test VO, test voiceover. GarageBand gives you a couple different ways to export this. Actually, it gives you three. Normally, you're gonna use the MP3 or the AIFF. The AIFF is the uncompressed version. It's gonna be a much bigger file but it's gonna have a better sound quality. The MP3 is going to be the compressed file. It's gonna be smaller. It's not gonna take up as much storage, but it depends on what you're doing with the file. If you are going to mix this at some point with music or put it into your podcast, I would go ahead and leave it as the AIFF because you don't want to compress it multiple times. And then just come over here and export it. And friends, you are good to go with getting the voiceover done. And if you're looking for additional tutorials and how-tos, visit brassybroad.com forward slash blog. See ya.